Now this video is all about esters, alcohols and carboxylic acids. So let's start by examining alcohols. Now alcohols have the functional group OH. So the first alcohol has one carbon and it has this molecular formula. Most importantly, you'll need to be able to draw its displayed formula. So start by drawing that alcohol functional group and then fill in the rest of those hydrogen atoms. Remember that each hydrogen forms one bond each carbon forms four bonds and each oxygen forms two bonds and that will help you draw it correctly. Now, in order to name our alcohol, remember that we use the mnemonic monkeys eat peanut butter. And that will help us remember our prefixes. So monkeys stands for meath, eat stands for eath, peanut stands for prope, butter stands for butte, and so because we're looking at one carbon, we therefore know that our alcohol is called methanol. And the last thing to be aware of is that all alcohols end in ol. So drawing the second alcohol should be nice and straightforward. Our molecular formula here is C2H6O. So draw those two central carbon atoms, add that alcohol functional group, and then fill in with hydrogens. Because it has two carbons, we're therefore looking at eat, so that's eth. So the second alcohol is called ethanol, which is the one you're probably most familiar with because it's what's found in alcoholic drinks, and it ends in ol. Looking at the third alcohol now, C3H8O, draw those three carbons, add your OH functional group, complete the hydrogens. Monkeys eat peanut means that the third alcohol is called propan. Notice that that OH functional group occurs here, and that's on the first carbon. Remember, the whole molecule could be rotated. In chemistry, you always start with the fewest number of carbons when you're naming, so that's why we call that carbon number one as opposed to carbon number three. The OH functional group occurs there, which is why this alcohol is called propan-1-ol. However, there is a second form. So if I draw those three carbon atoms again, this time we add that functional group onto the central carbon, complete the molecule as normal. So again, we have three carbons, which is why it's propan. However, this time the OH functional group occurs on the second carbon. So that's why the name of this alcohol is propan-2-ol. Now check out the statement I've made here, which is that propan-1-ol and propan-2-ol are isomers. And the reason they're isomers is because look, they both have the same molecular formula, but they have different displayed formulae. That OH functional group has shifted and as a result, we can say that they are isomers. And so the definition of an isomer is that it has the same molecular formula, but different displayed. And then finally, let's draw the fourth alcohol. So as you would expect, C4H10O is the molecular formula. Let's draw four carbons in a row. Draw that functional group. I'm just going to draw it here for a change. On that first carbon, I could have easily drawn it over here. Fill in the rest with hydrogens. Let's name it. So it contains four carbons. So according to this, we're using the prefix but. Then we need to say, where is that OH group? Well, it's on the first carbon, so we need to put a one in our name and end it with an ol. So that's butan one ol. How about we shift the position of that OH functional group? Let's put it on the second one this time. So down here, fill in our hydrogens, let's name it, four carbons butan, the OH is on the second carbon so it's butan 2 ol. Now there's no point trying to draw a third isomer, for example adding the OH here because remember we can flip the whole molecule so that carbon therefore becomes the second one, so that's actually it, there are only two isomers of C4H10O. Now we need to turn our attention to carboxylic acids. Now I'm going to write the name of the first one, which is methanoic acid. Notice that it's called meth. Monkeys eat peanut butter because of the one carbon. All carboxylic acids end in anoic acid. Now I'm not going to worry about the molecular formula because I don't think it's at all helpful here. I'm just going to show you how to draw it. First of all, you need to be aware that the functional group of a carboxylic acid is this. And so if I draw that, if that's the bare necessities for that carboxylic acid, we have to do is add a hydrogen in order to complete the molecule and just double check your number of bonds. Carbon needs to have four bonds, one, two, three, four. Oxygen has two, one, two, 
one, two, hydrogen has one. Yeah, perfect. So that's the first carboxylic acid. The second one, monkeys eat, therefore is ethanoic acid. We need two carbons this time. Add that functional group for the carboxylic acids and then fill in with hydrogens. And that is ethanoic acid. The third carboxylic acid now is propanoic acid. So it will draw three carbons in a row. Add the all important functional group. Complete with hydrogens. And that's propanoic acid. The fourth one, butanoic acid. We're going to have four carbons in a chain. Add the functional group. Complete the hydrogens. And we're done. So now we need to look at esters made when an alcohol reacts with a carboxylic acid. So the earlier part of my video becomes important now. Notice that this is a reversible reaction and produces water as a byproduct. So it's a reversible reaction, which means it can go in both ways, the forward and backwards direction. It's an example of a condensation reaction. And that's simply because a small molecule is formed as a byproduct, which in this case is water. So we can say that a condensation reaction is when water is released. One other thing you need to know is that you need a catalyst, which in the case of making esters is strong sulfuric acid. The last thing to mention is the ester functional group. And here it is here. And I'm going to show you how we form esters now and how to name them. So first of all, we're going to react methanol and ethanoic acid. Now we're going to write the word equation first of all. So there's the reversible reaction. You need to name the ester now. Now the first part of the ester's name comes from whatever the alcohol is. So it will come from the methanol here. So the start of the ester name will be methyl and it always follows the same structure of naming esters. The second part of the name comes from the carboxylic acid. So it comes from the ethanoic acid. So the name of this ester is methyl ethanoate. And you need to add your water. Now we're going to draw them. So there's our methanol. Here's our ethanoic acid. So in order to form that water as a byproduct, we need to lose the OH from the carboxylic acid and the H from the alcohol. And it always follows in that way, that the OH comes from the carboxylic acid, the H comes from the alcohol. And as you can see, that will form H2O. And then it's just a matter of sticking the remaining parts of the molecules together, like so. Double check your bonds. Each of the carbons needs four bonds. Each of the hydrogens must have one bond and the oxygens two. Yeah, and just to highlight, here is your ester functional group. Let's show that we also make water. And that's it drawn. So this over here is your ester, which is methyl ethanoate. Let's do a second example now. Let's try ethanol and propanoic acid. So reversible reaction again. The first part of the ester's name comes from the alcohol, so it'll be ethyl. The second part comes from the carboxylic acid, so it'll be ethyl propanoate. We make water. Let's draw the ethanol. And now for the propanoic acid. So the ester, we lose this OH here, this H here, and stick the remaining ends together. You need to draw it nice and carefully doesn't matter which way round you draw the atoms, whether it's upside down or not, it makes no difference. And there we are, done. One thing I want to mention is that esters are sweet tasting and smelling. They're volatile, which means they evaporate easily, and they're used in food flavorings.